Hello YouTube and welcome to part two of the Rigol scope review. Now if you remember my first one went bad on me. It took him three and a half weeks to get a replacement but let's crack this thing open and see if this one's any better. Stand by. I went through this scope and uh, did everything I did with the other scope to make sure that it did not do what the other one did which was hang up and freeze up so I couldn't press any of the buttons, nothing would work. So far this one seems to be running perfectly, so fingers crossed. And a couple of things I've noticed, one of them not so good, and the other one a nice, a nice uh, surprise. First of all, the probes they sent are even worse than the last ones. They come out, they, they're actually hard to push on here, they don't really stick too well. They just flop right off, so in order to get them to stay on there, you have to push them to the point where you think you're just about going to break it, then it sticks. The nice surprise was I turned the fan on and I thought for a moment I had another dud of a scope because I couldn't hear anything. The other one, the old uh, one that I sent back, the fan was so loud it sounded like a jet taking off. This one has a really quiet fan on it. You barely notice it. It's a lot nicer. Let me show you what I've got here. I've got a circuit board. These two chips are talking to each other through I2C. And I'm going to turn the I2C decoding on on the Rigol scope and show you that. I set the scope up to trigger on I2C. I've got the trigger set to normal and now I've got to hit decode 1 I square C uh, shows the bus is on if you turn it off it just shuts the decoding off turn it on turns the decoding on and you can see that it's showing us our data here along that line it's decoding it and uh, you can't see real well with the what's on the bus but it doesn't really matter because you will go out to here and we'll go to the event table and we'll turn the event table on and that shows what's on the bus it tells you if it's acknowledged or not. There's the details. You can choose between details or table. And this is just writing the same thing over and over again. It goes every four seconds. It writes to the other chip. You can just see it changes just a little bit. It's writing the same thing. It's not, it's basically just a, to tell the two chips that one another is still alive. But anyway, that is the decoding and it does work. It tells you the different reads and writes. And it comes with a whole bunch of uh, different types of triggers. They're only trial versions, a lot of them. I square C of one is one of them that's a trial version. All right, I turned the cursors on. We're going to go ahead and take some measurements. We're going to do it on the X axis. And move that over. We're just going to measure that with that pulse there. So you can see your, you can measure your pulse width there, that's nice. 10.4 microseconds, 96 kilohertz. A lot of information this with his Regal scopes. Very impressed with it so far. You can do, you can measure your amplitude with the y-axis, the difference. 
totally cool stuff. The next thing I'm going to show you is uh, how easy it is to measure automatically the waveforms that come into this thing. And I'm going to be using these little horizontal and vertical measurement menus to the side here on the left. Unfortunately, I cannot find my frequency generator. So I have to use this little embarrassing here, but a Radio Shack audio generator. I got this. My, I was going to college back in about 1989-1990 and it still works. So I'm going to be using this to put a square wave up on the screen and measure that. Alright, I've got a 100 kilohertz square wave, which is not very square, but i got a 100 kilohertz square wave on the scope and I'm going to show you the measurement stuff here. You press measure on the screen and go to display all and that gives you pretty much everything max, minimum, peak to peak voltage, RMS voltage, your frequency, a ton of stuff on there if that gets to be too much, you can turn it off and come over here and we're going to measure the, measure the period. We'll measure the upper pulse width and then we'll go over to the vertical and we'll measure peak to peak. And we'll measure Vmax for the heck of it. And that shows up at the very bottom of the screen. And uh, what you can do here is put on the statistics. And you can see here it gives you the current. Yeah, let me see if you can see that gives you the current, the average, minimum, and maximum. So I'll turn the amplitude down here a little bit and turn it down and up and you can see that it gives you a new minimum and a new maximum. Pretty cool stuff. And you can also do graphing on the screen. Okay, here is if you want to get rid of those, you go to the clear button here and you can get rid of them one at a time or you can hit it again to recover it if you deleted something by accident. There is also a counter here. We'll go to channel 1 and you can see our counter is 100 kilohertz. Turn that off again. Go to the second page of the measurement. We can hit history. We'll turn history on. And that gives you a graphical representation of what these, these four are basically now in a graph form on the screen. And I'll change the frequency here. You can see what that does. it's changing it'll slowly go across the screen okay you can see we're in graph mode here and I'll change the here's a pulse width and the period you've got the voltage and things here this is actually kind of cool it shows your graphical representation here of what's going on if I change frequencies you can see that pulse width will go down go back it'll go back up again you have a graph or you can show a table it has all the different changes there very cool stuff one way you can uh, quickly get rid of all these down in the bottom instead of doing them one at a time if you press 
measure and hold it in for a second or so and release it, they'll all just disappear and get the everything else, all the other menus out of the way and you're right back to your measurement again. Also, I should mention here that it's got the little USB uh, port here. There's one in the back also. You can plug a USB stick in there and all the data you've captured you can store it on the USB stick which is actually kind of cool. Well, what are some of the things I like about this scope? Well, it's got a nice big screen. You can really zoom in on the trace on your signal you're looking at. It's got a lot of automatic measurement features that are really awesome. It's pretty intuitive to learn. I actually like the buttons. I didn't think I was going to like the buttons at first, but it's actually nice to be able to just punch the button of what you want and it's there instead of going through, you know, three or four deep of menus trying to find what you want. That really turned out to be nice, a nice feature on this scope. Now, there are some little quirks and things I didn't like about the scope. Uh, one of them is the the small print on the help screen and on the little pop-ups that show you the measurements. The print is really small and hard to read. Another thing is the rotary encoders are really touchy. I mean, if you you could turn them and you go to select it, and all of a sudden it jumps to the next menu item below. It's it's a little too touchy for my taste. And the probes, I. I don't even get me started on the probes. The probes are, most manufacturers give you cheap probes, but these are beyond the pair. They're, they're really cheap. They're, this is the first thing I'm going to have to upgrade is the probes. They work, they'll work for a while, but it's just not, not great. One of the things that are the biggest annoyance is you get a lot of the triggers for RS-232 USB and things like that and they're for the trial period. You only get them until the trial period's over and then they don't work anymore. Which, I mean, the scope is 800 bucks and I, I kind of get it. You gotta make, make up some money. But one thing I don't get, one thing that's just really annoying is you get a certain amount of memory with the scope and that memory is built into the scope. You don't add more memory. But when the trial period's over, the memory is pretty much cut in half. I mean, come on, Regal. It's on the scope. It's built into the scope. Just let us have the memory. We bought it. Come on. That's like going out and buying a four-bedroom home, and you get there, and one of the bedrooms is locked, and you can't open it unless you pay another $10,000 for the house. That's, that's really annoying. You just let us have the memory. Otherwise... I really like the scope. I really um, give thumbs up to Regal for their customer service. It is better than anyone else I've seen. Now the big question, should you buy one of these? And the answer depends on who you are. If you're a big company, you've got a $10,000 budget, you might want to look around for a little higher end scope. If on the other hand, you're a small company or you're a one man band, and you've only got a thousand dollars to spend I would say buy this scope it really works nice it looks good the screen captures everything nice the menus are easy to learn it's a pretty intuitive process so all in all I'm pretty happy with it and I'm gonna keep it if you like this review please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe I need more subscribers please subscribe Catch you next time.